It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. And welcome to another episode of Trading Stocks Made Easy. I am, of course, your wonderful host, Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor. You know, I am so happy you can be with me on this particular episode. Because if you listen to the show on a regular and consistent basis, you know we talk a lot about trading stocks for monthly or weekly residual income, and you also hear me talk an awful lot about consciousness. So every once in a while, I like to get back into the studio and with an expert, someone who I love, respect, and adore, bring them on the show so that you can better acquaint your idea of success and link it up with your consciousness and your desires. And today's episode is really, really hot because one of my favorite motivational speakers is here, and his name is Tony Mitchell. And we are here to talk about, in the time that we're together, the link between your thoughts, your actions, and your consciousness, and manifesting success, money, and happiness in your life. So if you stick right there with me, Right after this break, I'll be back with you and one of my favorite guests, motivational speaker, Tony Mitchell. You're listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Want to learn more about how to trade and invest in the stock market? Visit thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. That's thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. And order the Wealthy Investor's Guide to Stock Market Success audio series. This easy-to-follow 5-CD audio series and manual will teach you the basics of how to buy and sell stocks, how to collect quarterly dividends for life, plus hidden income-generating strategies like covered call writing and volatility trading. Start creating financial freedom right now. Get the financial education you need to get ahead. Visit thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. And welcome back. Okay. In the studio with me here is one of my favorite motivational people in the world. I met him, I, I don't even know how many years ago, but he is really good at what he has to say and explaining the concept of creating more success in your life through your thoughts. Tony Mitchell, thank you for being here. Great to be here. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Well, this is good. Now, we go back. I mean, I don't even know how many years. I know it's over 20 years, over right? Over 20 years. Okay. I used to host a talk show here in New York City. Nightfall with Tyrone Jackson. <laughs> that is correct. And you were one of those people who would come on this talk show whenever I needed a guest, as well as my celebrity friends. Now, I'm even bigger. I have my own podcast, Tony, and it's heard throughout the world. So thanks for coming in and being a part of that. It's great to be here. You know, I started a rumor. Even the Pope listens to the show. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> so if the Pope is listening, Tony, now's your time to shine, right? Okay, let's go back into your history because you have so many wonderful stories of how you became a success coach and a motivational speaker. But one of the things that you are truly, truly gifted at is helping other people find their path to success financially and in the material world. And you do that through coaching them through a wide variety variety of techniques. But let's just start out first. When did you make this connection between the external world and the thoughts that run through your mind and how powerful they are? Well, I first read a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy when I was in college. I came over from New, uh, from New Jersey, was working down Broadway, went in this bookstore, was up on the shelf. I took it back to college. I started practicing the ideas in the book. Joseph Murphy was talking about how, with our minds, we can create the world of our liking and uh, to our desire. So I started practicing that in college and kind of let it go for a while. But when I came to New York City, I took a class called the Silva Mind Control Method, the Silva Self Mind Control Method, learning how to control your own mind, to learn how to delve into the subconscious level of mind to create what you want through visualization and mental programming. My problem was... I had read all the positive thinking books, Think and Grow Rich, The Power of Positive Thinking, Create Your Own Miracles, all these books, but I had a head full of knowledge, but nothing was happening in my life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting the results I wanted. So I started practicing with the Silver Method, which is a specific technology to go onto the alpha brainwave frequency, which is the entry point for the subconscious mind. One thing I learned, you don't get necessarily what you want in life, you get what you really believe is possible. So with this technique, I started immediately 
visualizing myself in getting my first break who was a TV commercial for Budweiser Beer. Got it, visualized an agent, got the agent, visualized my first job, got the first job. I was sailing. My breakthrough with money came when I was wanting to create $10,000 and had no idea where it's going to to come from. Okay, now let's stop for a moment because this is a money show, right? And I always like to connect the dots for people. Somewhere before you even picked up these books, you realized there was a connection between what you were earning, your happiness, and your thoughts, right? Was that an innate experience? How did you realize that there was value in the relationship between what you believed and what you were creating? I read a book years ago called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Chapter one talked about thoughts are things. Everything in the visible world began with a thought in somebody's mind. The studio began with a thought in the architect's mind. Your clothes began with an idea in the clothes designer's mind. Mm -hmm. Everything begins with, with an idea in mind. If you get the right idea and cultivate it with repetition and visualization and affirmation, and see yourself already having what it is you want, the universe will bring it to you in seemingly miraculous ways. By coincidence, attracting it to you to the right right people, placing you in the right position at the right time, in the right circumstances, to manifest your greatest dreams. Now, for a lot of people, that Napoleon Hill book was very powerful and still continues to be to this day. Right before you read the book, Were your parents motivational in nature, that they endorsed this idea that your thoughts are connected to the external world? Or was this something that you just felt on your own? I kind of just felt it on my own. In college, I really didn't have an idea of what I wanted to do when I got out. But one day I was walking through the cafeteria, picked up a book somebody had left on the table. It was on psychology. So I started reading this psychology book, a textbook, but that started me in the thinking about the mind. And then in Think and Grow Rich... I said, wow, thoughts are things. If I think the right thoughts and ideas in my mind and program them, as they say, with affirmations and visualization, I can create a life of joy, success, health, love, happiness, and total success. Yes. So that's that's how I made that connection. But I wanted to make clear that I had a head full of knowledge with all these books, but nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. Not until I learned how to focus my mind at the alpha brainwave level consciously Mm -hmm. did things start happening because that's the level where it's kind of a magical level where whatever you visualize with certainty will soon manifest in your reality. Okay. It can't not happen. Right. So start it for you with just this desire and this curiosity about the inner workings of the mind, Mm -hmm. which we know can be very complex, can also be very simple. And then you started working with some tools where you further develop the idea of this mind reality relationship. Now, I, you know, people who listen to this show, right, are looking to change their life financially. Sure. Uh, I use the stock market as that modality. It's worked for me. It works for my students. But this $10,000 story, I absolutely love. There was a time in your life where you wanted to kind of put this mind relationship, uh, mind relationship to material world idea to work, and you decided you wanted ten thousand dollars, right? Yes. $10, okay. So tell us how that happened. So I went to uh, one of my motivational teachers years ago, Reverend Ike, and he was he's a money he's a money teacher. Prosperity and success is your birthright. You can become a millionaire if you want to. Very well known in the New York City oh, area. Yeah. yeah. So I said, well, and one of his keys was you don't have to know how it's going to come, which stops most people. Most people get stopped because they don't know how it's going to happen. So I said, let me use these ideas and see, see what will happen. So I started programming, went home that night, started programming. Programming is a term I use for visualizing and affirming in my mind that I had these $10,000 in my possession. And what I would do, the visual imagery I would have, I would imagine myself every night counting 100, $100 bills before I went to sleep. And kept this up for about a uh, month and a half, uh, maybe two months. Shortly after that period of time, I got a call out of the blue from my cousin who lived over in Jersey City. Turns out when we were born, his mother put us in the title for the home he's living in now. His mother at that time was about in in her 80s and was having bad health. And he called me up and said, Tony, my mother wants to see if it would okay if we could buy you out out of the title for the home so that if she died, He'd own it free and clear. So I said, sure, I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that. <laughs> he said, um, I said, how much are you going to give me? He said, $10,000. He said, how do you want it? 
I said, give me one hundred hundred dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> Took the PATH train over to New Jersey, picked it up, came back. I said, wow, this stuff really works. Let me set my goals higher. Okay, so some people, right? We 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 know that there are skeptics in the world are going to say, oh, that was just luck. It really didn't have anything to do with the ten thousand dollars that Tony. Uh, initially visualized and desired, what would you say to those people? I'd say if you don't think positive thinking works, try negative thinking. <laughs> we know neg- that works. <laughs> negative thinking will definitely work for you. So <laughs> right. you, have to, you, have to, you have to read, you have to investigate something called quantum physics. Many people who are skeptical like a more scientific point of view. Quantum physics is a study of the smallest particles of matter and how our minds can influence even the smallest particle of matter. One of the books that I read is called The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. Very excellent. But set goals that you want to manifest in your life just as an experiment. Take 30 days, set yourself a goal for money or whatever you want, visualize once a day before you go to sleep at night, having that in your life already. Put yourself in the picture, see it, feel it. And the hint, the secret is The stronger you can feel the emotion behind what you have, the sooner it will come into your experience. Mm -hmm. I had another experience where one of my negative thoughts about money was, it's never enough. Um, Money's a struggle. Money's hard. Money's hard to get. I changed that to thousands of dollars now flowing to my life in easy, wonderful ways doing what I love. Shortly thereafter, I got a job for um, national TV commercial, international actually, $13,000 $13,000 check, my first residual check, $13,000. So that's another instance. I can name instance after instance where this has worked for me, and it'll work for anybody who takes the time to put it into in practice. Yes, and you teach people exactly how to manifest more or exactly what it is that you want in, in your life, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I don't remember, on, on the old show, the TV show I used to have, you uh, came on, I was in college at the time, if you can believe that, and you came on and you talked about, there was a girl who I liked at the time, I didn't have the fortitude to go and actually talk to her. And I said to you off camera, I said, Tony, how will I do this? And you said, your voice was still the same. You go, Tyrone, here's what I want you to do. (laughs) And I don't know if you remember this story. And you said, um, I said, well, there's this place I see her on campus almost every day. You said, visualize the exact time I chose, 1209, and see her coming down the escalator. See yourself going over and actually talking to her. And the two of you having the positive exchange. So I did that for uh, three weeks and I picked the day. And then on that day, it was like a Thursday or something, right? I went down. I waited. It was 12 o'clock. I got there early. I hate to be late. Uh, Then it was 12.05. It was 12.09. I was like, this is not going to happen. And she came right down the escalator and I didn't talk to her. So you see, even though I asked for what I want, when it really happened, I didn't follow through. You must hear stories like that all the time, but they end in the positive. Not only do you have to visualize and affirm and program You have to take action towards what you want. And action is a feeling inside you that will, that nothing will stand in your way. I think I told you a story about the meeting this gorgeous woman on the plane. And, uh, oh, yes, right. We talked, I met her and I talked to her on the plane. And, oh, man, she wouldn't give me her number. She wouldn't give me her name. Or she gave me her name, but not her, not her telephone number or address. So when I got back to Cincinnati, tried to research universities of Cincinnati graduates. I found out she graduated in 1965. Ran into a friend of hers who I didn't know until I met him that day, but he knew her who was selling IBM typewriters to the place that she works. He hooked me up with her uh, office uh, telephone number and address, called her, and we had a nice, beautiful relationship. Right, and she never forgot you, which never is interesting. Me. Now, it's interesting. A lot of people are into the process of visualization, yes. writing down what they want. Mm-hmm. But what I have found is they don't take the action. And the action is really important oh, yeah. um, because the action puts you in alignment with that which you say you truly desire. Oh, that's right. right. Okay. In, in fact, one of the – maybe uh, some of your listeners have uh, seen the DVD, The Secret. Yes. And that's kind of a simplistic thing, although it has some truth in it. But one thing it leaves out is the requirement to, after you do the visualization, do the metaphysical uh, psychology, you have to take action towards one step in getting what you want. If you don't take the action, then you just like it's like you're just waiting for it to drop into your lap, which is generally not going to happen most of the time. Right now, thoughts are energy. 
Farts are things. Yes. Okay. And a lot of people spend a lot of their mental energy doubting themselves. Therefore, they never have what they truly want. In this case, in the case of trading stocks made easy, more money. They're not willing to take the action. They're not willing to change the thoughts. And here's what's interesting. And then they hang out with people who say, you'll never make money doing that. How do we rid ourselves from toxic people who don't support our true desires? People are attracted to you based upon your energy and your belief system. Birds of a feather flock together, as you always say. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is have that person write down all their negative thoughts about money on a notebook. Maybe they have uh, 20, 30 negative beliefs, whatever. You have to take each of those negative beliefs, out of all those negative beliefs, pick out the top five that are most insidious, that you, most, that you believe most powerfully, and figure out a way to transfer that negative belief into a positive statement. For instance, I never have enough money. Change it to money flows into my life in easy ways. Mm -hmm. I can never save enough. I'm saving $500, $1,000 a month or whatever. But write down all negative thoughts that stop you, identify them, write them out on paper, turn those negatives into positives, and then figure out a, a picture or mental image that will go with that positive thinking and then work on that image to visualize a change in your thinking. And psychologists tell us that it takes about 21 days for a negative thought to be transformed into a positive thought. I say give it 30 days just to make sure. So for 30 days, you focus on a positive thought. One student in my class was a, a stock investor, not in your class, but on his own. He was investing, and he made, I think he said he made about $100,000 in one year. He changed his thought to all my investments are profitable. And that's what enabled him to make that $100,000 income through stock market on profits. And one of the things that I really love is the mind, to a certain extent, is a computer. Mm -hmm. If you put in the right data, it's going to produce the right results, right? Yeah, garbage and in, garbage out. That is correct. Put right in, get right out. Yes, absolutely. And okay, so I'll tell you what, we've got to take a commercial right now. Okay. When we come back, I want to talk to you about tools things that we can actually do to change our mindset, to reprogram ourselves. One of them is affirmation, and the other you've already alluded to, which is visualization. And we'll talk about some ways in which you think that that can help our audience. How's that? Oh, that's great. All right. Back with Tony Mitchell right after you take a listen to this. You're listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Want to learn more about how to trade and invest in the stock market? Visit thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. That's thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. And order the Wealthy Investor's Guide to Stock Market Success audio series. This easy-to-follow 5-CD audio series and manual will teach you the basics of how to buy and sell stocks, how to collect quarterly dividends for life, plus hidden income generating strategies like covered call writing and volatility trading. Start creating financial freedom right now. Get the financial education you need to get ahead. Visit thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. And welcome back to Trading Stocks Made Easy. Today, we are with motivational speaker and success coach, Tony Mitchell. And before the break, Tony, you and I were discussing this idea of the relationship between your thoughts. I love that phrase, garbage in, garbage out. And what you actually create for yourself in your life. Now, we're going to advance this discussion because I want to talk to you about the idea of affirmations. So if there's something or some experience or some financial experience I want to manifest in my life, I can write down the money that I want, how I want my life to change. I must also be mindful of who's around me when I'm in this focus concentration period. But an affirmation does what? If I wake up every day and say, I am wealthy, I am wise, and I am happy, I'm going to get more of that? Is that the idea? An affirmation plants the positive thought and feeling deeper and deeper inside your subconscious mind the more you say it. The problem is most people have unconscious or subconscious negative thinking about money that they don't even know they have. Mm -hmm. So how do we expose that? Like I said before, Write down all your negative comments that you said to yourself about money, transfer those negatives into positive affirmations, and then affirm every day for the next 30 days, and that negative belief will be released, uprooted, transformed into the positive, and you'll go get on the other side of that. You go from the lack of money to the abundance of money. 
I don't go in my work, obviously, because I'm more about trading. But when people have negative ideas and thoughts about money, most of the time, it's not even theirs. It's yeah. something that they picked up either from their religion, a family member. They found somebody who lost money one time, and that became the narrative. When we come into the world as, as children, we pick up beliefs from our parents, our family members, teachers, ministers, close people that we're with. From birth to about mm, six or seven, we're like sponges, and we take what they say is to be the real reality with money. I remember one of the students in my class was a belly dancer, and her father was a blue-collar worker. And one day she came home after dancing at some nightclub with um, a whole pocket full of money thrown on the kitchen table. She had more money in one night than her father made all week. She was made to feel bad and ashamed because she surpassed her father's income. That impacted her consciousness and stayed with her until she was an adult at like 21 or 22, until she realized how her negative belief that she didn't know she had was pushing money away from her and not drawing money to her. So she had to expunge that belief, release it, and then put in something like, endless money flows into my experience doing what I love, dancing, and then she was fine with it. But she had to work on it a lot, 30 days, until that belief was changed from negative to positive. Now, you know what I see a lot in like the NBA and the NFL? I see these guys coming into $11 million a year, $20 million a year. And because they don't feel like they deserve the money, they basically just get rid of it, right? Through negative habits. And sometimes it's drinking and sometimes it's buying homes that you can't afford. Because sometimes people can attract money to them, and if they don't feel that they deserve it, they figure out a way to get rid of it very quickly, right? You, in order to have money, you have to have the consciousness to use it. If, it you, if you give a person $10 million who comes out of a, a, a poverty mindset, they'll lose that money in, in less than five years. Mm -hmm. Look at um, the stories with a lot of multi-million dollar lottery winners. Most of, them, most of them, the ones who don't have the consciousness to use it, report that in five years they, they go into bankruptcy because they think it's an endless supply of money, but it's really not. They, they don't know how to manage it. They never had this much money before. They don't know how to use it. People come to them with all kinds of schemes. They get involved in the schemes. They lose all their money. Well, if you don't have a wealth consciousness, it's like your mind wants to take you right back to the state where you were. That's right. So you can be, feel comfortable and predictable. <clears throat> exactly right. Okay, let's talk about, uh, we talked about affirmations, right? Let's talk about visualizations. A lot of people who want to create more success for themselves create something called a vision board. Well, they'll put an image up on their wall, you clip it out of a magazine and you say, I want to live in a house sort of kind of like that. Tell us a little bit more about the process of visualization. Visualization is the subconscious mind's directive to create what you want. The subconscious mind works best through visualization because with visualization, you can create a picture of a feeling. And the more intense the emotion and the feeling that you visualize, the sooner that picture that you visualize will manifest in your experience. And one day you'll be walking around, it'll happen, and you say, wow, this is what I programmed a week, two weeks, three weeks ago, a month ago, and now I'm living the reality right here, right now. So visualization is the preferred method of tuning into the subconscious mind to create what you want. And it's very important that you just don't close your eyes and visualize, but that you visualize with a certain manner where your subconscious mind is functioning at the alpha brain wave frequency at about 10 cycles per second. And that's, a, that's the frequency where the mind can really be impressed with what you want more rapidly and more quickly than just closing your eyes and randomly visualizing. Now, for some people, visualization works best in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, for some, someone like me, I do all of my visualizations at night in the evening, right before I go to bed. It's a positive form of programming for me. And I always say to people, if you want to make more money, stop watching the news. You that's know, right. If you go to sleep with the news on and there's stabbings and killings and all that, that's in your consciousness throughout the night, right? So I'd rather reprogram myself before I go to sleep <laughs> Watch, I find that it works best. Watching the 11 o'clock news will give you a lethal dose of negative vibrations. Yes, yes. So don't watch the news. If you want to program, program at night just like you do. Because why? Because just before you go to sleep, we're in that transliminal area between wakefulness and sleep. We're getting ready to go into the alpha, theta, and the deeper delta level of mind. So if you... The last thing you think of before you go to sleep is going to be more powerfully impressed in your subconscious mind. That's why I say the most 
powerful time to program with visualization is just before you drift off into sleep. And the next most powerful time is the first thing when you wake up in the morning because you're just coming out of that alpha state, theta state, close your eyes, set up your day in your mind for five minutes, see you, see your day going the way you want it to go, and it will go that way most of the time. Yes, absolutely. Now, we were talking about this before we got in the studio. I don't know where all of this inclination towards visualization came. When I was a teenager, I was, most people know I was raised by a single mother. When I was a teenager, I used to lay around on the couch a lot. And in, in my house, laying around was like the kiss of death. It was like the worst thing you can do because in my mother's mind, that was laziness, right? So I would be looking up at the ceiling. Uh, we would always have music on and I'd be thinking about what I wanted my future life to look like, right? So after laying around on the couch for about 40 minutes, <laughs> I needed a nap. My mother didn't understand that because I had been working the whole time. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. When did you... Uh, so for me, I didn't know about the power of visualization and affirmation. I just referred to it as thinking. Mm. When did you realize that you in your life had a natural inclination towards visualizing and getting what you want? You've given us some examples of it. Um, but was there a time when it became an easy-to-use tool because you understood what you were doing? It's, yeah, yes, especially after I got the training... But early on in childhood, I got a BB gun and got a bicycle and things. But I didn't know the connection between the manifestation of those things, mm -hmm. those toys, and my mind. When I got older and took the training that I'm now teaching in New York City, that's when I made the connection and got really, really deep. I started reading books, going to seminars, going to classes, uh, flying out to California, doing work out there. And that really hit home for me the power of visualization because what you're going to experience tomorrow is what's in your mind as a potential right here today. Absolutely. Very quickly, because we're running out of time, tell us about the classes that you teach here in New York and what happens for a lot of your students. I teach a class in New York City called the Silva Method, S-I-L-V-A, method.com. You can find my contact information on the website, too, under live seminars. This class is taught worldwide. I'm the main teacher in New York City, and um, we're now in the 34 foreign countries. And um, if you want to get a good book to read about it before you take it, uh, pick up The Silva Method of Mind Control by Jose Silva. It's a paperback book available on Amazon. And uh, I think you'll find it to be incredibly powerful for your life. Hey, listen, I've known you a long time. Real pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for at least coming in and sharing your thoughts and ideas today. Thank you, Tyrone. It's one of the things I love to do most. All right. Tony Mitchell, check him out online and make sure you pick up some of the books that we've actually talked about in this episode. You'll find that they will really help you change your life. And if you want more financial success, not only have the books that we suggest, but you always have thewealthyinvestor.net. Hey, listen, it's Tyrone Jackson, The Wealthy Investor, saying thank you for listening, and I'll see you soon. Happy trading. You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button, and you'll automatically receive our next episode.